Are you ready to take your blender modeling to the next level of precision and exact movement? Now, I'm not talking about CAD-like precision. I'm not talking about CAD-like modeling where you create a parameterized sketch and then extrude it out and create the shapes from there. If you come from the world of CAD and you want to do that in Blender, there are plugins that you can do that. They're still kind of in beta, but they're very promising and they can help. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about teaching you to do Blender modeling, but with precision. So let's jump into that real fast. Let's take our blank scene and let's quick shift add a monkey mesh. Love Suzanne. It's easy to see which direction she's facing. So there's Suzanne. Now, let's say that I want to take Suzanne and I want her to be like 20 millimeters up in the Z so that she's not straddling the, the plane anymore. How do I do that? One technique that we could do that is I could just type in where I want her to be. The way that you do that is if you notice on the right here, I have a panel open in my 3D view. If you don't have that panel open, you can get to it by hitting view sidebar or N. I like N. Open, close, N. I really dig that one. So if you hit N at the top one, you've got item. And then here we've got this items, Suzanne's, location, rotation, scale, and dimensions. Let's play with those a little bit. I said I wanted her to be 25 millimeters up, so her Z is going to be 25, and boom, there she is, floating in the sky, 25. Let's say that I want her to be facing, like, to the left. So let's say I want her to head to rotate. How would I do that? Well, it's a rotation. Uh, it's just going to be around the Z, so I'm going to rotate her Z 90 degrees. Oh, no, that's that's to the left. I wanted her to the right. So I'm going to do negative 90 degrees. There we go. Let's say that I want Suzanne, uh, looking at her dimension, she's she's 19.7 millimeters tall. I want her to be 40 millimeters tall, okay? Well, I'll just type that in, 40 millimeters tall. But now I got a problem. Yeah, she's 40 millimeters tall. But I, I wanted her to be the same in all of them. Well, for that, we just go to the scale factor. And notice that for Z, her scale factor is 2.023. I'm just going to click that, hit Control-C to copy it, and then I'm going to hit the Y and Control-V to paste, and hit the Z and Control-V to paste there. And now she's got the same scale factor. So even though her dimensions aren't the same because it is Suzanne and she's different dimensions, it looks right because they were all scaled together. Now there's another place that we can get this information. If you'll notice that the properties panel has a little orange tab that is the object properties and in there, there is a transform tab. You click transform on that. We've got the exact, it's practically the exact same menu as this location, rotation, scale, all of that stuff is in there. And so if for any reason, maybe you're in one of these other tabs and you're doing stuff and you want to get to that, but you don't you know, can't bother, be bothered to go back up to the item, I guess you could get it right there. Now, if you set up this window the way that I recommended, you'll notice my viewport display is higher because I used a viewport display here more than I used a transform here. But I don't know, maybe you'll find it useful to go in and, and do the transform over here. It's an option. Now there, uh, actually, I want to talk about if you go into edit mode, and let's pull up the item menu back again. Go into edit mode with a tab. And let's go into edge select or face select, vertex select mode. One. Okay, we're in vertex select mode. And I'm going to select the vertex right on the top of Suzanne here. You notice we have the X, Y, and Z data for Suzanne. Now notice that we are in, currently in local mode. See, if we took Suzanne and moved her around and rotated her and did funny things, these x y and z's would still remain where they are because they are relative to suzanne but if i want to control them so that they are in the same place like in the grid of blender we can switch it to global now you'll notice that when we do that the x changed for the y so let's go back and forth between them 
and the Z became 45 here. Well, that's because the scale factor, all of that gets calculated. The local is pre-scaling rotation and moving around, but the global sticks to the global values. So if I wanted to say, take that point right there and move it, let's see, move it up like another 10. I could just type 55 in there and boom, it's another 10 up. Now you'll notice that we don't have rotation and scale here. Well, you know, vertexes, we can't rotate anyways, and we can't really scale one vertex. We could select multiple vertexes maybe, but we still don't gain rotation and scale. We gain some other information, bevel weight and crease, but we don't gain rotation and scale. And that's because that information is not kept at this level. At this level, these are just points in space. So it will figure out where they are based on when you click on them, but it will not remember their rotation information, not like it does with an object. So yeah, we don't have those, but we can still precisely move things in edit mode using this method. Now I'm gonna exit edit mode real fast. And what if we wanted to, uh, let's say we wanna move her exactly 20 points to the left, okay? Which at this point is in the Y because she's rotated 90 degrees. How do we do that? Well, if you are using the gizmos to do the movement or if you're using the hotkeys, the technique is similar. I'm gonna start with the gizmos, I usually use hotkeys, so I guess that's why I'm starting with the gizmos. So if I grab the movement gizmo here, and we've talked about constraining your movement. So if you click and hold on the Y so that she's moving, but don't let go. Before you let go, type in on your keyboard, two, zero. And now you'll notice you can't move her around, but she has moved over exactly 20. And when you let go, that's where she is. So again, let's try that in the X. I want to move her, let's say she wants, I want to move her forward 30. So I start moving in the X and I type three zero. Oh, she went backwards. That's because right now X is that direction positive, but I wanted to move her negative. Well, that's real easy. Just hit the minus key and then let go. And she's moved exactly 30. And that's pretty neat. That's, that's a really kind of neat technique for moving things around. Now, if you're doing it with hotkeys, the way that I do it. Oh, and I should mention, this also works if you're doing rotation. Let's, let's rotate her 90 degrees. So rotation gimbal, start moving in the Z, but then type nine zero and then let go. That's an exact 90 degree movement. Scale works exactly the same. So I type to scale. I'm going to click the middle one to scale her up, but I'm going to hit two and then let go. Perfect. It's the same with hotkeys. So let's say now that I want to move her in the X that direction, I'm going to have my selection gimbal instead of any of the movement gimbals. And I'm going to type G X four zero, press enter. Boom. That's 40 millimeters that direction. G Z 100. <laughs> there she is flying a hundred millimeters up in the air. GZ negative 90. There we go. She's back down and she's only moved up 10. G, or not G, let's hit escape and undo that. R, Z, 90, no, 180. There we go. We can actually backspace out while we're doing that, like we're typing in a number field and type in 180. Uh, rotate around the Y, 180. Do a, do a aileron roll. <laughs> so we can use these same techniques, scale 0.5. That's a half size scaling around. So we can use these same techniques when we're doing hotkeys or when we're doing uh, the gizmos to move things around. And these techniques also work in edit mode. So I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to select the, the faces on the chin. In fact, I'm going to go to wireframe mode and hit my circle select to select all the faces on the chin and the bottom of her mouth. And then I'm going to move them up G Z 20. And then I'm going to switch my view back to solid. And there we got a big mouth that's uh 20 millimeters bigger. Actually that's too much. So I'm going to go G Z negative 10. There we go. G Z negative five, you know, 
play with it. You have control. Okay, I'm going to hit tab, exit edit mode, and uh, I'm going to rotate her around the Y 180 degrees negative to undo that rotation. And I'll notice that her Y is like 0 0.000014. I don't know why it does that. Rounding errors is why it does that. I'm just going to click that and type it to zero. Just settle it to zero. I like I like it when my rotations and scales are precise. Now, what if we wanted just to snap to the grid all the time, just to keep it, keep things locked to the grid? Well, here's how we do that. Notice at the top of the 3D view, there's a little, uh, it, it's supposed to be a magnet. You click that magnet and this snaps your movement. And so if I start moving around, and I'll do this with the gizmo and start moving around the X and the Y, notice that she's kind of snapping, snap, 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 snap. Now, if we pull up the drop down for this, we can see that we can snap to all kinds of things, vertex, edges, groups. If we had two objects, we could snap them in such a way that it will try and make the one just magnet to the other. But if we just do increment, it's just moving based on the, the, the relative location in the 3D space. But turn off the grid move and move the monkey around in just, you know, constrain it to shift Z or X and Y. Move the monkey imprecisely for just a second. You notice that the X and the Y are an imprecise number. Now turn on that precision snap and start moving it around in the X and the Y again. Notice that it still is imprecise. Yes, it is moving exactly 10 millimeters in whatever direction that we're moving. It's snapping, but it's not snapping to the grid. And I really like it when things snap to the grid. So how do we do this? Well, click that drop down again, and there's a, a button on the bottom that says absolute grid snap. Click that. Now start moving Suzanne around and notice now that she only snaps, only goes to 10 millimeter increments. Well, what if we wanted to do it to one millimeter increments? Well, this is kind of tricky. You kind of have to zoom in and I'm not sure that it works. Not if you're at a strange angle, it won't work. So go to top view only and zoom in enough and notice that the grid in the background now we can see, if you zoom out, we can only see every 10 millimeters, but if you zoom in, we can now see every millimeter. And once you can see every millimeter, start that movement, and she moves one millimeter. And if we want more precise movement, we can zoom in until, uh, let me come over here, until we can see those, and now when we start moving her around, she'll be moving by 0.1 millimeter accuracy. So this only works in the orthogonal views, top, side, front. But when you're in these views and you zoom in or out, your ability to move them, actually, let me see. This might work in perspective view. Nope, it wants to lock. Nope, it does. Yep, it only works with the orthogonals. This ability to you know, dial in your precision by dialing in your view, having it locked to the view is something that I've only seen Blender do. It's, it's an okay way to do it. It, it, it means that your view relative to what you're looking at controls your level of precision, which kind of makes sense. Like when you zoom in on a thing, you want to be more precise with it, but that's how that works. And it, it, I, I will admit it's a little bit weird, but it does indeed work that way. So there we go. There are a couple of techniques that you can use to take your blender modeling. And let me give you a quick example that, that might be like completely comprehensible for, for a usage of this. I'm going to delete Suzanne. I'm going to add, in fact, one more technique, add in a cylinder. And when you add in a cylinder, I think we've talked about this, you get for a moment, these properties of the cylinder here, and we can change these these properties right now. So we can set the radius of this cylinder. We can make this a 20 millimeter radius, which means it's 40 millimeters across. And yeah, boy, I want some more vertices on that. So I'm going to take it up. No, oh, just take it up to 100. Look at that nice and smooth. But I only want this depth. I want it to be real thin. I want it to be two millimeters thick. So there we go. We've got a 
precise cylinder. And you can even take this cylinder now and move it around. And, and now that we got the snap on, we can put the exact location of it uh, wherever we want it. And then let's add another cylinder. And this cylinder, I'm going to make taller. I'm going to make five millimeters, but I'm going to give it a radius of 1.5. It's a three millimeter cylinder. And I'm going to move it into X. Well, let's see. I'm going to put it here and then I'm going to move it GX5 negative. And then I'm going to duplicate it real fast. So I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate and move it another five, no, maybe 10. There we go. And now what we can do with this is I can select that original cylinder. And uh, did I tell you guys to install the bool tool? Let's use the bool tool under edit, open up the bool tool, select one of the small cylinders and then shift select the big one and hit difference brush Boolean difference. And then select one of the other cylinders and select the big one and hit brush Boolean difference. And we have a precise button we've actually made something useful and we've made it with precision with all of these techniques so hopefully you can see now that you have all the tools everything that it that it needs that you need to be able to make things precisely in blender yes it's different than the way that you do it in cad but it's it's just as precise. And if you exported this and 3D printed it and measured the print, it would measure, see, exactly 40 millimeters across. These holes should be, depending on the precision of your 3D printer, about three millimeters across, and they should be about 10 millimeters apart because that is how you laid it out in here. You didn't rely on imprecise uh, maybes we snapped it to exactly those numbers. So hope that you can see the value of this. I hope that this technique will enable you to really do some, some neat and precise things with your blender modeling. And I want to thank you very much for watching. Remember, you are a child of God. And you're special to me. So take care of yourself and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.